Rainy outside. Why are we even here? All right. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Really. <laughs> score, you got to know two things. The degrees of freedom, so you know which row to look at, and the area that's in the tail, so you know which column to look at. So that, that chart's actually not that evil to read off, as long as you know how to get alpha. So now, now we're basically going to get done with this section the minute I do this, because it's just the same as always. I plug everything I got in my formula. There's a lot more work to do on this one, but it's still the same idea at the end. So I'm going to start at 80.6. I'm going to go up and down this many steps. Where do you go? 12.973 divided square root of 5. One big mistake I see is people put 4 there because their brain gets stuck on degrees of freedom. The formula requires n, not n minus 1. I like it. That's 12.9 plus 3. Uh, of course not. What, what's the standard deviation? Oh, 736. Yeah, there you go. I like it. I like it. All right, is everybody cool? So now you just plug that in to the calculator. What did you get for the, the air? 21.73. Let's see what I get. Yeah, I like it. 21.74. 80.6 plus or minus 21.74. All the way around. How are we doing? And just to show you, uh, uh, I don't know, let me just show you this because it actually is decent. You don't have to do this. You can just do that in the way you always do it. So now watch. Let me show you one little thing. See this button here? Stout. Stout. So you can stout. Stout. You can store the last thing on the screen. I'm going to store it in X. And then I can say, what was it? 80.6 minus X? Bam. 80.6 plus X. Bam. What? what? Now, of course, if you don't know what I just did, who cares? You can still do it. <laughs> That's I like fine. that. That's so handy. Yeah, it's great. Why haven't I seen that before? Uh, all right. So we get 58.86 up to 102.34 roughly, right? And then you could write, we are 98% confident. confident that the true uh, that this interval, 58.86 to 102.34 contains the true mean grade in this class. Yes? Yeah, you're fine. You're fine. You went to one decimal place, you're fine. Okay, okay. Why is that? Look at that. Is that, uh, does, is that very, like, uh, what do you, how do you feel about it? If somebody said to you, if you said, what's the average in class? It's somewhere between a 58 and 102. That's, like, pretty good, then. Huh? I mean, like, you would think it would be somewhere between that, right? Well, yeah, yeah. Is it going out on a limb? No. 
Of course not. How many people in the next room? Somewhere between zero and 8,000. Oh. <laughs> You're helpful, right? Why is that so not focused? Why is it so unfocused? Why is it so wide? My sample size is stupid small. So it makes sense. The T-score was bigger than the Z, pushing it out because my sample was so small, and I wasn't even sure about the standard deviation. It's a sample standard deviation, so there's a couple things for it to make up for. I like. No, 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 no. I, I, these are sample grades. What we are constructing is we want to say that the real average of everybody in this distribute everybody in this population is is and so we can say the real population that this interval seems to catch the real population average yeah it's your credit there you go uh, the results don't even have to make physical sense you could have negative links and shit because it's just the less I'm certain about something the wider it's going to be and if I'm already close to zero to start with it could push me past zero I could push me past the 100, right? The average was 80. And then the spread was huge, 21. So of course it's going to push me back past 100. Right? But, you know, I give you X credit. Somebody can get 106 on a test. Yeah? We need to wide error because we don't even know that our spread number is correct. Right. So it kind of makes up for that. Yes, that's the way you can that. Exactly, because my T score is a lot bigger than the Z score would have been. Well, that would be, I could calculate the plus or minus independent of T or Z, right? Right. But that's why their numbers are not the same as we would get because they use a modified yes. Z score. Yeah. Um, or modified T score, yeah. Yeah, the, I really want this to make sense. Uh, the more confident you want to be about the range you end up with, the wider the range has got to be, of course. Right. It doesn't mean that by making yourself less confident, you're actually getting more accurate, which is a, uh, which is a, uh, right? If I if I made this to be a 70% confidence interval, wouldn't it be a lot less wide? Yeah. Which would make people think, oh, look at that. He's really sure. No. Why? Why is it so small? Because I only, I'm 30% chance I'm wrong now. Shit. You see what I'm saying? So it's actually happened in the past that somebody made like a, normally you make 95% confidence interval. Somebody made like an 80% confidence interval and then reported it. And somebody caught it and they're like, what the hell are you guys doing? This is only an 80%. That's, that's misleading. So it made it look like, ooh, but really it should have been, oh. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, you know what to look out for. Yeah. Or you know what to read for further down, right? right? Before you just go, holy shit. Yeah. Yes, because nowadays there's a lot of holy shit happening without any, oh, let me see you, and if I really trust what they're saying. What's up? Yeah. You got fake news with doctored stats. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So that's section 8.2. If you know how to use the T-squared chart, the formula is almost the same as the one we used before. Bam. All right. That's all there is to that one. Uh, let's see. Do you want to take a break now or? Yes. Okay. Come back at. Come back in five minutes. I'm joking. Come back quarter still.